Greetings Internet, my name is Chris. Uh, today I'm going to show you something that's very different from what I've usually done in terms of uh, content. Uh, so as I've said in a previous video, I'm attending university at the moment. Uh, not really sure if I'm going to continue, but yeah, at the moment I'm attending university, uh, studying something called uh, Mediology, which is media technology put together in one word. Uh, yeah. Uh, so this is one of the things that I've been working on for uh, my university. Like basically we had to make a game in our programming class. And uh, this is uh, this is uh, coded in processing, which is like a pretty easy to use um, uh, programming uh, language or a compiler, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but like it's, it's pretty easy to use. Um, yeah, I just wanted to show you something I've been working on. You can also see there's a lot of code here. Most of it is for the obstacles. Holy shit, there's a lot of fucking code right there. This is all one, uh, all one function. All this code right here. Uh, that I've called the obstacle spawner. Basically, <laughs> uh, it's because I spend three lines of code just, you know, on every single object. It's a, uh, it could be done better, but whatever. It works, so you know, we got other stuff here. Uh, yeah, I have two classes as well. Uh, one for the obstacles, one for the player character, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, but yeah, I just wanted to show you this. Uh, I'm just gonna press play and and yeah, show you how it works. It's pretty easy. It's based off of um, well, I've, I've it's basically a, a homage to. Uh, the impossible game. I've called it the somewhat possible game, because you know, if it was actually impossible, you wouldn't be able to beat it, which wouldn't be fun. Um, whatever. Let's let's start. So it starts off uh, pretty chill. Like the rampant difficulty uh, builds over time instead of just immediately throwing you into something that's super difficult. Shit. Some of the some of the jumps require uh, some some timing. Like if you jump at the wrong time, you're fucked basically. But that's one of the, the things that I like about the Impossible game, which is why I wanted to make this game. Uh, it's the fact that you know it's sort of like a memory game because you have to remember when to jump and stuff. Ah, didn't jump then. I let go of my keyboard for some reason. Also, you can see there's uh, three ways to jump. And jump is the only control you have. Uh, w, uh, space power, or the up arrow. And then you can see the program also keeps track of uh, how many tries you've had. So far I've had two tries. Um, and it keeps track of current score and high score. And the high score is basically tracked in, in seconds. So that's the amount of seconds you've been alive. Oh, I hate this part. This part is pretty tough. Oh, man. Yeah.
It's all about getting in the sen, sen moment, basically. This one's a cheater. Some of them are meant to, like, cheat you a little bit. Let's go. Oh, you think you're supposed to jump, but you're not. That sort of thing. Oh man, that is such a shitty place to die. 127, that's pretty good. Um, but yeah, anyway, I'm just gonna probably include like a full uh, playthrough of the game um, after this. But yeah, so just a few things. Uh, the background song is Stands of the Pixies by Jens Kiltofter, which is, um, it's, it's royalty free, so there shouldn't be any ads on this video uh, because of me using that, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, it should be royalty free, and uh, it's a pretty good melody. I really like it. It's the kind of melody that, like, I've played this game a lot over the course of making it. Like, I've spent maybe the past week uh, programming this, like, on and off. Uh, and, like, it's one of those melodies that I've heard it probably 400 times, like, the beginning part, at least. And, I, like, I'm not tired of it yet, so, you know. Also, uh, just a shout-out to my friend uh, Ryan. Um, for like being my programming sensei, he's like helped me out with, well, with a few problems I had. For example, the the squares, there was a problem with the the collision on those. Like you're supposed to land on them, uh, so you can jump off of them like a platform basically. But it didn't really work for some reason. Uh, after I uh, put in an array for the obstacles and stuff, so <laughs> he helped me out with that. It was really nice. It also, it helps like when you're when you're coding something like this. It helps to have someone else to bounce ideas off of. So you know, it's really nice to have someone else that uh, is a lot better programmer than me to help me with that. Uh, anyway, yeah, here's a it's gonna be a full playthrough of the game. Thanks for watching.
Holy shit, that took a lot longer than I thought it would. This is like the purest form of uh, self-hatred. It's like uh, <laughs> making a game, forcing yourself to beat it. Holy shit, I hate myself a little bit right now. Thanks for watching.